Hi, this is Bob. I just wanted to show what I've been working on here. This is the most recent project. I finished up on this about three weeks ago and I've had it on the air since uh, several times with some very good reports. It was a HW-104. I was curious as to whether I could put the HW-104 on six meters. I decided to make it a six meter only rig to simplify the project and so uh, I did. Anyways, uh, uh, I wanted to show you what I was doing recently here. And uh, this rig uh, here, uh, I had to change the uh, HFO oscillator in the uh, D board back here. This is the D board. And over in this corner, I put a crystal in there. I bought this crystal at uh, eBay. It's a 19.660 megahertz crystal. It was a very small crystal. And uh, I had to take two turns off of the uh, HFO coil. I used the last one in line here, L409, and uh, took two turns off of it. And it tuned up and worked just beautifully. Got a nice clean signal. 48.9, I think, was the frequency. No, 58, excuse me, 58.9 something. Anyhow, uh, that then beats with the VFO in a premix circuit and uh, then is applied to the, uh, the uh, C board here, which is your RF amplifier board. There's a mixer in there too. And uh, that signal then goes through these bandpass filters which you can see are made out of uh, toroids. Those are on the yellow cores, which are good at 50 megahertz. I think I've got uh, 11 turns on those. And little capacitors, variable capacitors, to tune them. And then the output of that then, which comes out at 50 megahertz, feeds into this board here, which is the first stage of the uh, SS9000 power amplifier board. I worked on the SS9000 and helped with the design and built the very first SS9000 that worked. <laughs> and uh, so I just I just made this circuit board with a little tiny round uh, burr uh, tool on a rotary grinder, hand grinder, uh, made by Black & Decker. Much like a Dremel grinder, both of them are very good. And the signal from that comes out right down here. That yellow coil there, that's a trap for images. There were, I found two images, and I, they're both close uh, to the operating frequency within about 4 megahertz. So I uh, made these two traps. They're 11 turns of wire on a quarter inch form and a 10 picofarad capacitor in series, and that's just put right across the, uh, the input to this amplifier. And then uh, you just tune out the, uh, the image. And then there's another one here. I put a second amplifier in here, and I just used a little block amplifier. This is an amplifier out of a cable TV amplifier, the kind that goes up on the poles for distribution. I just happen to have that. I bought these things at uh, Hamfest. They're handy little things. This is a 12 dB gain amplifier. It's perfectly stable, uh, clean, and amplifies sideband nicely. So uh, I needed a little more amplification, so I put that in there. That drives the power amplifier. This is from eBay. It's listed as a 100 watt. Uh, 1.5 to 54 megahertz amplifier. So if you put that in your eBay search box, this will come up. It was $75. And uh, it had a dual FET in here. The FET had, you know, it's two FETs in one package. It was a uh, MRF9120, which is a microwave FET. Uh, dual FET, but they use it here in this low frequency amplifier. So somebody got a brainstorm that they could do that, I guess. Uh, that amplifier is very, very sensitive to high SWR. I tried to operate on a, on a 2 to 1 SWR. Uh, I was playing around with it. Uh, I didn't realize the SWR was that high. 
and uh, the amplifier went out after just a few minutes. So I thought, well, I don't want something in here that's going to be going out easy like that. Uh, I, I don't want to be buying those parts all the time or whatever I have to do. So I got to looking around to see if I had anything else that would work. I had purchased at a ham fest, I think it might have been Dayton. Uh, I remember Hera Arena, so it was a long time ago. Two MRF 150 transistors, they're 150 watts each. And uh, I got to, so looking at those, they were pullouts. I wasn't sure that they were good. Uh, I tested them and uh, with an ohmmeter and found out uh, with that simple crude test, they checked good. So I decided to go ahead and just wire them in. I used three quarter inch pieces of uh, stranded silver plated Teflon hookup wire and uh, mounted those two transistors to the heat sink. They're actually underneath the board. You can see them down in there. And the board then is mounted up on little standoffs to get it up high enough to clear the tops of the transistors. There's a standoff under each corner. And uh, so anyways, I didn't know if it was going to work. I was playing around. I turned the thing on and boy, the amplifier works like gangbusters. So it does not put out uh, the full output because those transistors are designed to operate at 50 volts. And I did not have 50 volts. I got about 10 watts out at 12 volts. And I thought, well, I'd, I'd like to have a little more than that if possible. I had this little converter here, which also I bought on eBay. It was quite cheap. It's 100 watts, uh, 100 watts, they say, uh, up converter for DC and it takes the 12 volts that comes into the uh, rig here and boosts it up to 28 volts to run those two transistors. Now they're normally run at uh, 50 volts but uh, I figured I'll try that 28 volts and see what happens. Well what happened was that I get uh, uh, when I whistle in the microphone I get 30 watts of sideband and I'm really happy with that. I think that's just fine. I bought those transistors, like I said, at a ham fest for five bucks a piece, pullouts, and by golly, they work. They both have the same batch number on them, which means that they came from the same manufacturing batch, and so uh, I was hoping that they would also bias the same, which they did. There's a bias pot right here, and I set the bias on those at 250 milliampers for each of the FETs which comes to 500 milliampers bias and that works really good uh, I think for what I paid for this I think I paid a little $75 is like too much I think for uh, what I got out of it and so maybe something else maybe you could buy the circuit board in that without getting the whole thing I don't know but I did not like the uh, MRF 9120 uh, dual transistor FETs because of the way they they popped right out at 2 to 1 SWR. I uh, I checked the uh, SWR capability on the MRF uh, 150s and they're rated at 30 to 1 SWR at full output. That's 300 watts out and 30 to 1 SWR so they really take a big mismatch. So I'm thinking that it, at the power I'm running 30 watts for the two transistors uh, if the antenna should be disconnected or something, they're probably going to be okay. And uh, what else was I going to comment on? I, I don't know if I commented on these. Uh, I, I put This is the input to this amplifier. I put an image trap right there, which consists of 11 turns of wire on a quarter inch form. And a 10 picofarad capacitor in series with it. It just goes right across the input to this amplifier. And boy, there's an image at uh, 53.4 megahertz, and boy, does that knock it down. It just takes it right out. And there was a little bit uh, of that image left, and so on this amplifier here, I put another trap, and so there is no image left at all when you get to the final. It's quite clean. Uh, this is the band pass, not band pass, low pass filter. 
Uh, one section is tuned to 100 megahertz, the other section is tuned to 150 megahertz. Very simple little bandpass filter circuit, which uh, I found this uh, on, a, uh, on the internet. Uh, I was looking at the uh, instructions for the assembly of the Packer 6 meter amplifier. They, may, they have a really neat little 6 meter amplifier called the Packer 6 meter amplifier. And I saw this circuit and so uh, I just uh, took a little piece of circuit board and my, uh, little, my little grinder again with a burr on it and I made myself a little circuit board and I put that little circuit that they have there on the board just exactly like they have it and uh, it doesn't matter whether your input goes in one side or the other I believe it doesn't make a difference anyhow uh, it, it, it actually develops a little more output with that in the circuit so it provides a better match uh, with that in so the signal goes through that before it goes out the antenna and what else did I want to comment on I guess that's it I did add a little cooling fan right here and there's, there, I've got a, uh, a right down in there you might see a little bit of a black cube relay down there that turns on the uh, little fan. It also turns on the voltage to the 12 volts to 28 volt converter here. Uh, the 12 volt to 28 volt converter I was thinking might generate some noise in the receiver so uh, I put the relay in there to turn it on only when it's in transmit. And then I hooked up the fan too to cool things off because the transistors on this board here get pretty hot and so uh, I put the fan it mounts right over those transistors like that I haven't got it all the way in there but that's the way it mounts right over those transistors blows right down on them and keeps them cool uh, that's the whole thing there guys anyways that's the project I very I am very pleased with the reports I've been getting on six and that it works quite well and it's fun to do things like that just a, a what if what if I do this project and I wonder if it'll work and so uh, it took uh, quite a while I set it on the shelf a few times as I got frustrated with it or just got tired of it and finally finished it up about like I say about uh, three or four weeks ago and uh, been using it on the air since, made sure that it worked good, checked it out to see that it didn't have any uh, spurious products or anything going out and I'm real happy with it. So that's it. So uh, 73's everybody and good DX.